This week on Marae, an uncertain future. I really think we should focus less on some historic perceptions of public service and more about what is it that viewers really want to see. And the power of waiata. Te kaiti toki au he tangata e taia te uh, kukume i ngā kare a roto o te tangata. E aku manu taiko o tēnā koutou katoa me te mihi tonu ake ki te mahuri tō taro o te ao rīki i mate tau rekareka maira i ngā huarahi o tāmaki nei i te pō mere. E tama e aue ana te motu ki a koe, mou mou koe ki te pō. Hoki rawa mai ki a tātou, ngā mana ki tanga o te wā ki a tātou katoa. Yes, well, it's one thing to report the news and another to become it. When TVNZ announced its decision to outsource Māori and Pacific programs, with the exception of Te Karare, it was a shock to many. For the past week, media and the public have reacted to what's seen as a blow to the Indigenous heart of the state broadcaster. Here's how the story unfolded. Zed's getting a new home, and so is its Māori and Pacific Programs Department. It's outsourcing Wakahuya, Tangata Pacifica, Fresh and Marae to independent production houses, while still broadcasting them. I didn't see this coming. Ki tā rātai te tiro pia kārehe moni, i roto i nā kaupapa Māori, a hakoa kārehe utu ki a rātai mo te whakahaere i nā kaupapa Māori ko te māngai pāho, te kai kawe i enei a hōtaka. Outsourcing isn't simple. Even though TVNZ has given what's known as a broadcasting commitment to Māori programs, it's not the funder, te māngai pāho is. Its chief executive, John Bashara, wouldn't be interviewed, but he told Marae that there were no guarantees. TVNZ's commitment without funding commitment is only half the it's only half the puzzle. You know, you need to get both pieces to make this work. Um, we've 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 had many of these shows for more than two decades. Um, I see no reason why we couldn't have them for another two decades. The guts of the criticism is that you know the last vestiges of public broadcasting are leaving the building. What, what, what do you make of that? I do think at times people get a bit hung up about public service broadcasting and what that means. I really think we should focus less on some historic perceptions of public service and more about what is it that viewers really want to see. TVNZ is banking its reach will get it over the line with Te Māngai Pāho. Nielsen's data shows Marae with 60,000 viewers is the highest rating Māori current affairs programme in the country by 40,000. Other in-house productions seem safe, but who knows for how long? They're not ones we're looking to outsource right now. Um, I mean, but I think you know, this is a market that is moving really quickly. Um, and I think that the things that we will need to do in the future means we'll have to revisit a lot of decisions. There's been speculation that this is just readying TVNZ to be sold. Well, if it was, it wouldn't be my decision. You know, that's something that the shareholder needs to decide. So um, it's not something that I've heard of. And, you know, but it doesn't mean to say that people won't continue to speculate. You know, there's no shortage of conspiracy theorists out there. So soon I'll be discussing the issue with a panel, but before I do, here's a little background on each of our guests. We're in Auckland recently. A producer of Māori content for film and TV, Quinton Hita became a well-known face as a presenter of the influential Māori youth magazine show, Mai Tai, which started as a slot on Marae. In 1996, the show evolved into its own series on TV2 and carved out a strong niche on Saturday mornings for 12 years. In 2008, My Time was given a facelift and became IMTV, which carried on the legacy of celebrating Māori youth until 2012. In 2013, Toyoti took over the reigns of the show, which morphed into Totes Māori, 
But after one season, TVNZ put the program up for tender and awarded the time slot to white bait productions. This is the most recent example of TVNZ outsourcing a Māori program. Now live from Westpac Trust Stadium in Wellington is Chris Farfoy. Chris Farfoy kicked off his career as a journalist for One News. He went on to join the BBC and returned to work in the press gallery where he began his political career as a press secretary for Phil Goff. In 2010, Chris Farfoy joined Labour's ranks and claimed to put his mana seat through a by-election. He's now the party's broadcasting spokesperson. Marama Fox began her career as a Māori teacher and after three years working for the Ministry of Education, she won a seat in Parliament with the Māori Party as a list MP. Yes, dynamic panel this morning. Uh, so joining me now, the Māori Party's brand new co-leader, Marama Fox, program makers Toyiti and Quinton Hita, and in our Wellington studio, Labour's broadcasting spokesperson, Chris Whaafoi, te nā koutou katoa. Chris, if I could start with you, do you think TVNZ or the government have a hidden agenda? We just heard Kevin Kendrick, the CEO of TVNZ, say there are conspiracy theories around, are there? I guess he might have been talking about me. Um, <laughs> uh, look, I, I think um, you know, there's no doubt that TVNZ has changed over the last six years under this national government. It looks like it's trying to trim it da itself down into what it would call a business unit, as opposed to what we would want uh, as a public broadcaster. Um, so you know, you do have reservations about what they're doing. These are two very important departments, both the Pacific uh, and the Maori programming. Uh, and you've got to ask why they're not motivated to do this kind of thing anymore. These programs have been running for nearly three decades. Mm. Marama, what do you think this decision says about culture in TVNZ? Um, I think what's happening here is that we have a decline of cultural capacity. If you remove um, the Māori programs, what have we got left? If you look at the TV mm. news, who, any Māori faces there? Mm. You look at other current affairs shows, there are no Māori faces there. Where is going to be the back? the backup for our cultural capacity inside TVNZ, which is our state broadcaster. And these programmes have been the indigenous heart of TVNZ for so long, what's going to happen to the indigenous heart? There will be no indigeneity, basically. Absolutely. I think, you know, these are iconic shows that have documented our history, that have told our stories. You know, Marae TV, the biggest coverage ever of Te Atairangi Kahu, mm. where would you get that? Mm. If, if these programmes and these people were not working here anymore, who would have fronted that for our nation? And that was a, a, a moment in time that will never be repeated. And if we didn't have Marae to document that, it would have been lost to the whole nation. Exactly. And Toy, what about all the stories that have been told freely by our people over the last 30 years? Should TVNZ be able to keep those stories in their archives? Uh, yeah, well, that's, a, that's a big issue because from my perspective anyway, they belong to all New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. So they should be able to be repackaged for the benefit of, of future generations <coughs> uh, and, and not be monetized for well, whoever perhaps owns the archive if it's sold. Mm. Um, that would be a real concern for me if it was an overseas interest, mm. became a, a major player. Mm. And Quinton, you're making programmes in the heartland now. Mm. You look pretty young back there in the, in the my time <laughs> days there, brother. You know, back in the, in the good old days when you were here at Lot TVNZ as well. A lot of water under the bridge. Yeah, what yeah. 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 But what's your opinion as a programme maker well, of what's happening? Uh, that, uh, my understanding is not a fait accompli that the programmes will be disestablished. Um, outsourcing in and of itself, I don't have an issue with. I actually think there's some strong arguments in favour. Of it. I think the independent industry that's grown up around Māori television essentially over the last 10 years is thriving, it's starting to sustain itself, it's full of innovation opportunity. I mean, if you take a look at myself, you just saw the pictures. I started basically on the factory floor of television. Mm. To date, I've produced over 400 hours of television across a whole range of genres, including a hit feature film, Mount Zion. Mm. So opportunity exists there. Mm. I think the uh, TVNZ production in-house unit for Māori programs has been isolated from that independent industry. And so Television New Zealand and its audience, I think, um, haven't gained the benefits of the developments happening in the independent sector. Mm. Um, so that's the production of shows, assuming that the production of those shows go ahead. The bigger issue is what is the ongoing commitment mm. to Māori, mm. Māori programs. Ngāri, he wahanga rāne o tō ngā kau e pauri ana, ki te whakakorenga mai o te tari Māori, kua toru te kau taunei a hāpai ana e nei hōtaka. Well, yeah, no, they are heritage shows, um, but as long as they're put into a safe pair of hands, both technically and culturally, I don't particularly have an issue with that. I think the bigger issue is what is the ongoing commitment on, on our state broadcaster to Māori input in and on mm. screen. And let's be honest, we have no leverage. 
leverage. This is the issue. Mm. The only leverage we've got is a social obligation leverage, and until some formal policy is put in place with some actual concrete outcomes, um, and that will have to, that will involve political influence. And maybe you know, we look at the board here. Wayne Walden has, I'm sure, has a really um, thorough grasp of the issues facing Māori programs, given his history at Māori Television. We need to call on those people to champion mm. a place for Māori culture and language on mm. our. And state, that's that's state the broadcast. the biggest loss too is the advocacy within mm. the building. Mm. Uh, because when, once you go out of the building, you don't have a general manager of the department. Mm -hmm. You don't have that department who are mm -hmm. advocating for the Māori perspective. Mm -hmm. It was difficult, full stop, actually even being inside of the building advocating mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. um, a million dollars for Totes Māori in the last season was earmarked for uh, reflecting mm -hmm. Māori youth culture. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was told by a Pākehā man what we should look and sound like. Mm. And mm. so that was a constant battle. <clears throat> inside of, a, inside of the, the model, the structure of TVNZ, we could have that argument. Once you're outside, you've got to do what you're told or mm. you don't get the funding. Mm. Mm. Well, I would make the distinction between production and a um, department that uh, helps advise um, TVNZ. I mean, the ideal outcome would be some formal policy that I imagine would include um, <coughs> a Māori uh, expert at a uh, management exec level. Um, would include a, um, a specialist uh, commissioner mm. that proactively um, solicits and seeks out uh, Māori programs in the independent industry and builds relationships in the independent industry. Give me one of those over ten uh, <laughs> ten Māori shows. But, but that's yeah, yeah, the yeah, problem, yeah. though, yeah. isn't it? The yeah. problem is, is that in 2011, um, they got rid of the charter, mm. which had an obligation under the charter mm. for a vision of where Māori programming would go, where real Māori is being okay. expressed in a mainstream environment. Mm. You get rid of that in 2011, which we spoke out strongly mm. against. And in 2014, now we're going to outsource the programs. I don't have a problem if people, if there is an infrastructure out there to outsource those things too. But we are losing the cultural capacity inside mm. yeah. TVNZ. Mm. Mm. And that I have an issue with. We need to set a strategic yeah. direction. I agree completely with what you're talking yeah. about. Um, and with the loss of a charter, we lack the um, motivation and the purpose to do that. Definitely. And, and Chris, what impact will this have on, on audiences in the islands? Because Tangata Pacifica is being affected here as well, so is Fresh. So, you know, what, how would people in the islands react to this kind of decision? I look, both in the islands and in the New Zealand community, um, Tangata Pacifica has been going for 27 years now. They rely on that, uh, people up and down the country, to get their fix of current affairs. And I think that's an important thing. These are current affairs shows. Uh, and what we should be having is the types of the show in Tangata Pacifica that go out and challenge and question. And my concern is that if they are going to be outsourced, you might not necessarily have that motivation to go and question anymore because you're not going to be in-house and have the support of all those, um, the, the experience experience uh, and also the resources that you have uh, right now um, because if you're going to outsource these things and they're going to be independent productions you might not have the editorial independence that we've got you know this show and Tonga to Pacifica should be challenging people like me and if mm. they are outsourced then I think we're, I'm worried about the public service aspect uh, that these shows may no longer be able to provide New Zealanders. Is Te Maungai Paho and TVNZ working together in this strategy? Do you think that this has been going on for quite a long time? Oh, look, it, it, all, it all does come back to the money um, and TVNZ does have an obligation to have Māori programming uh, under uh, its wing um, under the TVNZ Act mm. um, but it's about the depth uh, you know what kind of resources do you have for production uh, what kind of questioning you're going to have and if, if, if it's going to be outsourced both for the Māori programming and the Pacific programming I don't think you're going to get the kind of questioning of people like me and anyone else uh, that's important in our communities that we seriously need to make sure uh, that our communities are being uh, properly looked after. Mm. It's obvious that you're going to be doing stuff in Parliament about this, Chris, but what about Marama, you and Tūrero, you're at the table, the government table. If anything, what do you intend to do go, to go forward? Well, you know, some of this is a little difficult. These are management decisions and people um, jump up and down when there's political interference, as is uh, what's been assumed in the um, Māori TV situation, <coughs> and then they jump up and down when there's not enough political interference. And so we need to tread carefully about not getting too involved into the management of something mm. but definitely I think our, our role is around that purpose that vision um, where is the place of te reo Māori mm. where is the place of Māori broadcasting and documenting our history now, if we have to go into a competitive market where you're buying TV programming because of its ratings pool and um, here we've seen today that Marae is one of the highest rating shows already mm. but if we have to go into a competitive market what are we going <coughs> to be competing against mm. um, and I've said it before fluff and titillation is that we were going 
going to go. And if yeah. that's not what this programming is about, this programming is about our iconic stories that are ours to be recorded and um, find their place in history and archived for our people. Mm. You know, some of that is not going to compete with a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Q, Marama asked the question, what is the place of te reo Māori in mainstream broadcasting? Where do you think that place is? Does it have a place in mainstream broadcasting or should we hand everything over I, to Māori no, television? I think it does. Actually, to be honest, I don't think mainstream television is the natural home for Māori language yeah. shows of, um, you know, uh, high content Māori language shows like Waka Huia, um, specifically and maybe Marae as well. The more natural home seems to be Māori television, but outweighing that I think is the um, symbolic nature of having these shows on a mainstream network and mm. also the responsibility that our um, state broadcaster has to represent <coughs> our, um, our culture mm. and our language on air. Mm. What would you like to see ha happen now, Toy, going into the future? Uh, well, I think the reality is it's, it's heading down the path that it's heading. Mm. TVNZ is, is heading towards the, the, the media future. It's, we don't have a state broadcaster. It's, it, that's gone. Um, I would like to see um, Māori television, I, I guess, pick that up because it's just going to have to. Mm. Really, that's reality and we're going to have to get over it mm. uh, because it, we've been told, and we hate to be reminded, but we've been told we're of no value, mm. Mm. really. Mm. And because they have, to, they have to meet their budgets, they're here to return a profit to the government. Under the current government, uh, we know where they're going in terms of state asset sales, mm. uh, unless Labour put, get their act together and the left managed to <laughs> ho hobble something together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to <laughs> together. <laughs> something together so that we actually have a national broadcaster because I think it is it is really important. Yeah. It, we, we're, we're a nation and we have to reflect who we are as a nation and not have a homogenised view of who we are. Mm. Like I said, I was told by Parkia mm. how Māori should look and sound. Mm -hmm. To me, that was a real issue. There's still a lot of details we don't know yet. Personally, I'm going to wait and see what the outcome is of discussions between Te Māngai Pāhu and um, TVNZ. I actually have a lot of confidence in Te Māngai Pāhu. Because so. mm. at the end of the day, Māngai Pāhu and TVNZ are going to make the decision about which production companies get, you know, Marae, get Waka Huia, get Tangata Pacifica. Are you interested in applying, Q? You, you've got a production company. Would that interest you? Well, absolutely, because uh, the point I made before, which is I think um, if they are outsourced, they need to go to a uh, safe um, pair of hands, both technically and culturally. I'm not saying I'm the only safe um, set of hands around, but um, yeah, for that reason, I'll mm. definitely put my hand up. And Chris, finally, is, is this an issue that Labor might pick up and run with in Parliament over the next few weeks, the next few months? Yeah, absolutely, B both for those communities. But it, it starts another debate about whether or not we do need another public broadcasting channel, non-commercial, which just happens to be uh, election policy. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you'll get your act together. As Toy Eti has just said, Labor needs to get their act together. So all the best for you guys in Parliament. And Marama, congratulations on becoming the, the, the co-leader of the Māori Party. That just happened over the weekend. Congratulations. And uh, yes, well, mihi, mihi atu ki koe. And also, Q, uh, toi, ngā mihi ki a kōrua. Ko tai mai nei kōrua ki tēnei uh, hōtaka i tēnei ata. Koutou katoa, ko rangatira te hōtaka nei o marai i a koutou. Me o koutou whakaaro rangatira tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Over to you, Miriam. Thanks, Scotty. Now let's hear from political commentator Willie Jackson. I found that absolutely fascinating. What's your view on TVNZ's decision to outsource Māori and Pacific Progress? Look, it's very sad. But, you know, all our commentators had, had excellent points. If you listen to, to um, um, Q, uh, TVNZ were useless anyway. You know, and so it's, a, it's time for some innovative, creative uh, uh, people like himself, which he is, to take up the challenge. But if you listen to Toy, Toy's saying, well, no, it's really important, but, you know, let's get the structure right. And I, I, and I agree with Toy. See, Toy had a great show going, uh, but he was told it was too Māori within TVNZ. So we've got a problem there, but the, the, you don't fix it by just chucking out everything. The infrastructure is so important. We had people like Uni Leonard, Whaingata, Selwyn Muru. These are the people who built this structure here. It gave this place some standing, some mana. It was, was honouring an obligation to Māori and but, a partnership. OK, so, I mean, but is it as... Um uh, as Quinton was saying, it's a symbolic importance that um, TVNZ has, you know, rather than a practical one, and well, that actually well, these programmes might be better served well, 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 outside of here. Well, practically, though, TVNZ hasn't got it right. They haven't built on the structures that the murus, the nutters and, and others, the Uni Leonard's put in place. It is important, tremendously important, as Marama Fox said, that we, get, uh, that we have a culture here. 
the state broadcaster must invest in terms of our perspective and our story. And it's not just about te reo Māori, it's about the Māori perspective, about the Māori story being told. Millions, if not billions of dollars, has been put into the state broadcaster to produce Pākehā stories. The Māori investment is minimal. And so, whilst Q is right, I have no doubt there'll be, um, with, with the outsourcing, we'll get some great programmes, but there must be an obligation and a commitment from this channel to us, as they have committed to Pākehā for the last 50 years. So let me just, let me just play devil's advocate here. I mean, things are tough for mm. broadcasters globally. Uh, TVNZ has to survive. Uh, they want to streamline their business. What's right. wrong with that? Well, streamline it at someone else's expense because you haven't put enough dollars or money or investment into Māori uh, over the years. We've been sidelined into ghettoised hours. Um, the Māori perspective, when it gets told by the toyitis of this world, is that he gets told that it's too Māori. Um, you know, we, we need we need Māori programming right across the channel. Um, uh, uh, Q talks about Māori language, maybe a benefit for Māori TV. It's got to be on Māori TV and main stream so that New Zealand can understand our perspective and the dangers here are the independent companies coming in who are they going to be I think initially they could be great because you've got the Quinton hitters of this world but you get the entrepreneur types you'll get some Spanish lot coming in wanting to do a, you know great great people great proposal writers great entrepreneurs the Maori story will get watered down the Maori perspective will get watered down Te Reo Maori will get watered down that's the dangers there's a lot of dangers here so you will have the support of Marama Fox and your views there what do you? I mean, let's move to Marama Fox. Mm. What do you make of her becoming Maori um, Maori Party co-leader? Well, you, well I think well, I think they're very lucky the Maori Party to get her. It certainly wasn't by any strategy. It was just by luck <laughs> that Marama Fox turned up uh, as an MP. She was gone with the rest of them, but but the numbers fell uh, fell a lucky way. They have an opportunity and a chance with Marama Fox now to rebuild. If Marama and Te Ururu can't rebuild the relationship with the mana movement, Marama and Te Ururu will be dead in 2017 too. How do you come to that conclusion? Oh, it's pretty simple, because, because if I was Annette Sykes, I'd say, let's do a deal. If Te Ururu says, go jump in the lake, then if I was Annette Sykes, I'd just work with Labour to make sure that they get out. She's got 3,000 votes, and Te Ururu will be history in, in the Wairaki. So uh, I know Annette will want to stand for the Mana Party, but I'd say, Annette, Mel's work with Labour, get rid of Te Ururu. What's I mean, because they've got at the moment, though, Willie? No, what they've got is a movement. They've got troops on, on the street. See, half of them don't give a damn about being in, in, in Parliament because that's probably one of their problems. They've got so many rads there, radicals, you know. Um, but but, but they're, they're strong on the streets, they're in the union movement, they're out there. A and that's why Tururu needs to have a look at what's happening rather than enjoy his portfolio too much. Work with Marama, get Marama to build the relationship with Hone. It's pretty simple. If the Māori Party hadn't stood in, in the north, Hone, Hone would have got in. And if the Mana Party hadn't stood in Auckland, the Māori Party yeah, would have got well, in. We'll have to see so what build the relationship or you all die in 2017. Right, you heard it from Willie here. OK, thanks for that, Willie. Now, this year we've heard some great songs from young up-and-coming te reo Māori composers, Central North Island group. The Puku o Te Ika won the choral section at the National Kapahaka Secondary School competitions with their memorable song, Kua Horo. Nahuia Wade was with the composers where they revealed the origins of their award-winning composition. O hine mutu ki roto rua Te roto tauri kura o etahi o ngā toa o te ao haka Me ngā kaitito Ko ngā whakaaro mo ngā waiata rereke Ka humai i te ao e noho nei tātou um, Ngā take rereke o te wā Ngā take e ngā kaunui ti ana e au um, E hara i te mea ka ta noho Ka ta whakaaro uh, ki tētahi kaupapa motuhake, engari ki te tau mai tētahi kaupapa ki roto i au. Um, ka whakarongo ki te, ki te whatu manoa, a kātahi ka whaia. Ko te kaiti toki au, he tangata e taia te uh, kukume i ngā kare a roto o te tangata. He whakarongo hoki ki o ngā kare a roto e taia e ia te whakaputa uh, i e rā. Um, ki ngā kupu, ki runga i te pepa uh, te ahara nei. Um, he kai, he kōrero, kai kōrero paki waitara, kai kōrero pūrākau. 
He ako ngā ōmua a kerea marau ko tenga i te kura kaupapa Māori o rua matā ki roto rua. Ko tō rau a reo tuatahi, ko te reo Māori. Te noko re nei i te e, e, e o ti i te, a, I te tuhinga ko tahi. Tamariki noa au i roto i nei mahi, ngari e tahi wākā ko tahi tau te roa a, ki te whakao ti i te tahi waiata. E tahi wākā tau mai e tahi kupu a, mo te whiti tuatahi. A, ka tahi, ka uh, ko natu natu katoa ngā whakaaro, ka pau te ono marama ka tai mai e tahi atu kupu. Te nuinga o ngā waiata kua tito a e au, ka whakaaro hia te tahi rangi i au e tuhi ana i ngā kupu, kia hāngai uh, te wairua o te rangi ki te wairua o ngā kupu, o koera te manako. I te mea kai te mahi ngā tahi mātou ko aku hoa, ko tana whea mā, a tana whea whauwhau mā, ko rātou ngā, ngā mātanga pūoro nā reira. Ka whakatakotoria te tū āpapa o te waiata, ōku ake whakaaro, te wairua e hia hia tia ana, a, me taku rangi. A manawa ora, e titua tēnei waiata nei te tairua mano mā iwa, I tino rata tōku pāpā ki tēnei waiata. Tērā pea he whakahihi nō nā nāku anō i tito. Oi anō, ko rāua ko tōku māma tērā, i awa he hui, i awa, ka kōrero rāua, ka huri mai ki au me te mea, tenga, manawa ora. Nā ka, ka hōha au i ngā, I ngā tau mai te tau, rua mano mā iwa tērā. Um, ka kaha ake aki rāua i ahau ki te waiata i tērā waiata. Uh, engari, kwa ki te au i nai nei, uh, nā a rāua aki aki I, I, I ora ai tēnei waiata. Roto iti, te wahi i whānau mai ai te tīmatanga o te waiata, wahoro. I te patu kei rātau i te rori ki tūranga nui āki wa mō ngā whakataitai. Ka tahi ka hou mai te rongo, kwa hinga tō rātau kaumātu a rāwiri rangi tauira, nā te mate manawa. I te he katoa ngā rā, kāre tonu i te whakapono ki tā mātau i rongo ai. Uh, hoi anō i a mātau e tatari ana ka whakatangi hea mai e tana whea e tahi, te tahi rangi, e tahi uh, aho. Nā, I tērā wā i te tituro mātau ki, ki te pari uh, o, o matawhaura, nā, kwa horo katoa uh, I, I te kaha a uh, i ngā mai o te ua. Nō rei rāha koa kāre he kupu, he whaka, whakātū i te āhua o te haehau i te ngākei, ko i rangā kupu i puta, koa hou. Me ara wāke ka whakahou hia tā rātau waiata tira, ka haere ki tūranga i te manawa pauri tonu, engari ka manawa ora i runga i te ātāmira. A, ko, te, ko te mahi a te wairua pea, he ara hia nai a mātou. Te mātu a rongo i tērā momo wairua a, e mōhi wai rātou me pēhea te whakaputa i e rā kare a roto. Koi rā te waiata makau a Anko Rauri, a, i whakatauria a, e tika ana ki a waiata tia tērā waiata. A, ki te motu.
Definitely deserve to win that song. It's beautiful, mm, beautiful, beautiful. Here's another reminder of our annual Ngātoa Whakaihuwaka Awards. That's right, last week we showed you the first recipient, former All Black Peri Weepu. Our 2012 winner not only scooped our top prize, he also went on to become the New Zealander of the year. 2012 was the year of the doctor. Health authorities were under increased pressure to fix health by fixing poverty. An outspoken Northland GP battled the system for Māori. For Whakaihuwaka, Dr Lance O'Sullivan, he received the Māori of the Year Award 2012. Do you know someone who also deserves recognition for who they are or the work they do? Email us, ngātua at tvnz.co.nz. Look at this, we've got a lineup of um, potential recipients right here. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> 2014, one of, might Someone's be one of them. Might be one of them. It might be Q because he's the only one that goes through Kaikohe at McDonald's on horseback. <laughs> <laughs> we just, need, we just need people to nominate. That's the <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Wakahuya as they visit Motato to talk with Kevin Prime, one of the prominent chiefs of Ngāti Hine. Ngā manaki tanga o te wā, kia tātou katoa. Hey, Paul.